Hey guys, what's up? It's Chris from CodeWithChris.com here with your very first video series called How to Build Your First iPhone Application. And my goal with this YouTube channel is exactly like it sounds, to teach you guys how to build iPhone and iPad apps. Uh, this first video series is going to teach you guys the basic skills and get you guys familiar with Xcode. It's going to be about uh, eight videos long I think and by the end of it you're gonna know uh, basic skills like creating buttons and creating composite views uh, learning what app architecture means in iOS uh, how to hook up handlers and using delegates and stuff like that um, in this particular video we're actually going to take a look at what we'll be building for the next eight or ten videos I have the demo ready and I will tell you guys where to download Xcode so you can get your environment set up and then we'll go and set up our first Xcode project uh, so let's get started so this is a demo of what we'll be building it's a dice roll simulator and as you can see, all it does when you click the roll button is just randomly generate uh, two random numbers between one to six and then show their dice representation on the screen. Uh, so it's a pretty simple application, but it's going to serve the purpose of teaching you the basics of iOS app architecture, some Objective-C basics, um, as well as getting familiar with Xcode. So by the end of uh, this video tutorial series you're going to know how to handle button clicks and how to build an iPhone view uh, comprised of smaller views you're gonna know how to load images uh, and show text labels stuff like that in terms of environment uh, you don't even need an actual iOS device at this point all you really need is uh, a Mac uh, you need to download Xcode which is free and as you can see during your development phase you can use this simulator that comes with Xcode uh, to to load up your app and to see how it's working and stuff and it comes with uh, all sorts of cool features like you can rotate it you can you can do simulate shake you can simulate memory warnings and you can even you can even put in a custom location if you want to debug uh, GPS specific functionalities okay so uh, the easiest way to get Xcode is to download it from the App Store uh, you can search for Xcode and it's gonna show up as the first result uh, if you don't have the Mac App Store for any reason you can still download uh, the image so all you need to do is hit this URL right here you're going to have to sign up for a, a free developer account and once you do you're going to be able to access this page and download this image right here Xcode 4.5.2 is the latest one so once you have Xcode installed let's go ahead and launch it and make sure you pull down the menu here and go to about Xcode just to double check what version you're running uh, as of the time of this video the latest version is 4.5.2 uh, and just make sure you're not running anything older than that uh, because sometimes your Mac may come pre-installed with uh, Xcode or maybe you've bought a used Mac which already has Xcode uh, and then sometimes you'll have two icons and you'll end up using the wrong one so uh, just make sure you're using the latest version and when you launch Xcode you might see a welcome to Xcode menu uh, in my case I don't have that but if you do have that you're gonna see a button that says create new project so go ahead and click that for me I'm gonna go through the menu system uh, which will be the same thing so I'm gonna create new project here it's gonna bring up a window uh, that allows you to select a couple of templates just to start off your iOS project and make sure that you're under the iOS heading and under application so there's a bunch of different uh, templates you could use and you might recognize some of them especially the tabbed application which is very common uh, in the uh, iPhone store but for our demo dice roll app we're going to use a single view application 
um, here you're specifying a couple of properties for your project you can change these later but for now uh, give your demo app a name I'm gonna name my uh, iPhone app tutorial uh, for organization, you can put your own name, and for company identifier, um, this is going to be really important when you start deploying your applications uh, to devices and stuff like that. Uh, because you know, once we get into provisioning and uh, basically setting up our app to deploy on real devices, it's going to matter um, what this is is going to matter. So normally, the convention is uh, going to be a top level identifier and then a secondary one and finally your app name. Uh, you can select what type of devices you want this to run on and again selecting one doesn't mean that it won't be able to run on um, the other. You can always tweak these settings in um, the build settings, the project properties later and what's more is that let's say I select iPhone and then I wanted to also allow this to run on iPad to have iPad specific views I could definitely add uh, iPad specific views and change my project settings later to allow it to run on uh, iPad so don't don't feel like this is set in stone but for our demo we're going to select iPhone uh, we're gonna leave use storyboards checked off and maybe in the future I'll do a tutorial on how to use storyboards you definitely want to have use automatic reference counting checked. Uh, you guys might have heard back then before uh, iOS 5 developers had to manage their own memory and that was a huge barrier for people learning Objective-C and iPhone and iPad development but nowadays we can have Xcode automatically do that for us. So you know, go ahead and have that checked off and you can leave unit tests uh, unchecked I mean so click next it's gonna ask you where to save it and there we go we have our project created um, it's uh, by default it's going to dump everything in the root folder and I usually like to organize this a little bit better I think I'm gonna go through that in the next video for now all I want you guys to do is in this top menu right here choose the iPhone 6 simulator and then just hit run to see that simulator pop up and see your app so there you go you don't have anything in this application right now it's showing you an empty screen but that's pretty much our hello world so I'm gonna end the video off there and look forward to the next one where I will it'll probably be about showing you guys uh, all the different parts of Xcode and getting you familiar with that and maybe uh, revising some of how this is structured here and organizing the project. All right, until next time, make sure to comment and subscribe. Um, comment especially if you have some questions and you have stuff you don't understand. That's where I'll be checking and answering your questions. And please follow along if you want to get the most out of this. Okay, until next time, bye.